that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now that looks like something that I will definitely not be taking home. Oh, whatever is it? Now, it doesn't look very... I don't know. Oh, it's got nails in his back. How odd. It's obviously got some kind of meaning. I mean, it's like an offering, but it doesn't look quite so nice. I mean, I could be wrong. It could be completely lovely, but something not quite appealing about it. Not something that I would want to have in the house. Let's, take a, let's get a better shot of it. Who are you? What are you doing here? What's your name? And what is your purpose? And why have you got nails on your back? Who are you? Yeah, I've come across things before that have had pins stuck in them, dolls and things like that. And I must admit, I'm not superstitious, but uh, I have a healthy <laughs> respect for odd things that I definitely don't want to take home with me. So this chap will be staying here. I'll send him on his way with, with blessings and Yeah. Let's hope he's a nice dog with nails in his back. Now, I don't know if you can see there, but just down here, look here. There is what looks like the outline of a pocket watch. Now I found a few watches here, um, a few military pocket watches, three in fact. Um, and so maybe this is another one of those, but I can't wait to see what it is. But it's, it's, it's great to savour the anticipation, but you can just see it there all crusted in. And so now I'm just gonna ease it out. Of course, what I would love would be <laughs> For it to have a name or something on the back but often it's got like a serial number and look here we have it and yes I think yes it is it's another military pocket watch there we are look it's got the broad arrow there general service mark 2 29554 what a fabulous find this morning. I wonder who that belonged to. It's a lovely clean foreshore this morning. The boats have been running for quite a while. So you can see really well what's going on, which is nice. Sometimes you come down here and there's so much mud on the surface that you really can't see a great deal. Oh, look, there's a little bit of pipe bowl here. I wonder if there's anything underneath. Let's have a look. Oh, looks like, looks like they could be. There. Looks like there could be. Oh yeah, I can feel a stem going down here. Looks like we might be in luck. Feels like a plain pipe bowl. 
Let's do a little extraction. Out she comes. Oh, look at that. Still coming. Oh, very nice. Lovely. So this pipe is a 19th century pipe and it probably dates to between about 1840 and 1870. Let's give it a little rinse. It's so amazing, isn't it, that, that these pipes still exist with such a length of stem, you know, after all the people that walk around down here. There we are. Get a better view of it now. It might have a maker's mark on the heel there. It doesn't have one on the stem. And that will fade back to that colour pretty soon. When it's exposed to the air for a while, that black colour fades. Very nice. And I will let that mud dry, just in case there's a nice little plug of tobacco at the bottom. Oh, I do believe that's my crow friend behind me. There's a couple of bullets here. That looks like a, a spent 303 round, maybe. And then there's this one, which looks like a, a practice round, if I'm not mistaken, with that crimped edge at the top. walk around here. Oh, I can see something that looks interesting over there, or it could just be a piece of rock. It looks like it's a piece of metal with a number scratched in it. Just here, look. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, it is. It's got a six. Now that's interesting because I've got lots of these. They're like little little game tokens and they've usually got little holes in them to indicate what number they are but this one's actually got a number scratched in it kind of makes it more personal somehow doesn't it I'll show you the rest of the tokens that I've got I've got a lot I think they'll be used to gamble as well back in the 19th century. Let's have a look over here. Oh, I've seen something round just down here. Can you see it? Just over here. Oh look, it's a coin. Is it a modern coin? Is it an old coin? It's got a barnacle on it. Must be fairly old. Let's have a look. I can't quite make it out at the moment. I'll clean it off when I get home. I love finding coins and it's fun when you can't see what they are straight away. Hopefully it won't be too worn. I can see Britannia there. Okay, I'll pop that in my bag. Let's continue along here, see if we can see anything else. been scraping around here and my trowel
surprised something out of the mud. It's just here and I nearly discarded it straight away to the side because I thought it was just a, a misshapen piece of metal. But look, what it is, is a little lead toy and it looks like a little lead Native American. There, uh, look. I think it was the headdress that caught my eye first of all. You can barely make it out really. But I'm pretty certain that's what it is. So I'm going to take it home with me and try and straighten it out and bring him a little bit back to his former glory. In fact, the other day I also did the same thing. I, I filmed myself uh, scraping and I picked up a little piece of metal thinking it might be something and then realised that it wasn't. And I still put it in my bag though, for some reason. And then I realised that it wasn't nothing later on and it's actually also a very, very bended up little lead toy. So I'll dig it out again and I'll see if we can do something to the two of them. Yeah, there you are, Luxie. Now he's got to be quite old. There's the, the base just here. And you can see a figure kneeling down with his arm, probably in the middle of pulling his bow back, I expect. Well, hopefully, we'll be able to clean it up. Aha! And what is this? Ah, oh, look. That used to be a lead horse, <laughs> once upon a time with a rider, but you can barely make it out now. It's completely destroyed almost. A toy from a very, very long time ago. Another lead one. Ha ha! I can see another lead toy. I wonder if this one will be in a slightly better condition. Look, it's just here. Oh, what is that? That looks like a lion. Or a rabbit. <laughs> now there's a big difference between a lion and a rabbit. Unfortunately, his head is covered up. I don't know, what do you think? Look, I can see some ears there, I reckon that put it in the camera would help wouldn't it um it's something running bounding leaping it could be a bunny could be a bunny rabbit i'll reserve judgment until i've tried to give it a little clean off yeah i think a rabbit rather than a lion We'll soon find out, hopefully. Ooh, what's this? Something ornate, look. Ooh, that was something at some point, wasn't it? It's like the leg to bottom of some kind of little box, ornamental box maybe. Again, lead. Lots of lead finds today, or at least I think it's lead. Interesting. What do you think that came from? Well, there's another little beauty just there behind the rock. I don't know if it's intact or not, but I can see that it's really pretty. What do you reckon? I think we might be in with a good chance, actually. There it is. Isn't that pretty? Come here, little pipe. Yes, it is. 
it's intact. It's a really lovely decorative one. Look at that. Oh, what a beauty. Let's give you a little rinse. That's lovely. I wonder who the last person was who took a puff of that. I have seen over there though signs of a Victorian stoneware ink pot. Look, it's down here. Ready to extract now. What's the chances of it being intact? Pretty good, I'd say. Pretty good. Let's leverage it out. Yeah. Yes, it is. Look, isn't that beautiful? Also known as pork pies because they look a little bit like pork pies. That's lovely. Okay, well, this is the thing, everyone. I'm doing an about turn. Because I put this dog on Twitter and it had such a huge reaction. And it seems that it may be um, valuable in terms of research. And I've finally been persuaded to come and recuperate it. Um, on the understanding that it's for research and it can always be put back in the river. You know, I don't like messing with things that are supposed to be left where they are. But on the other hand, if it's really of such great interest and maybe it's not as kind of sinister as I assumed, which is always a dangerous thing to make assumptions. So I'm going to take it with me and I'm going to be consulting a museum about it and then if necessary he can be returned to the river so uh, yeah so join me on this voyage of discovery and let's find out a little bit more about this dog about this art and let's not automatically assume like I did that it's something really, 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 really horrible. <laughs> Let's find out and try and understand a bit more about it. Okay. Right, well, friend, let's go. Thank you very much for watching my video and welcome to my studio where I'm surrounded by some of the treasures which I have found in the River Thames over the years and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the objects which featured on today's video including my new unexpected companion who you may have spotted behind me here this rather magnificent wooden dog he's now all dried out and he has a rather interesting tale to tell or at least that I'm going to tell for him. Um, certainly very very unexpected. He is the last thing that I expected to actually be standing next to in my studio considering when I first saw him I thought that he was never even going to leave the foreshore. And it's just such a great example of the ridiculously varied um, and miscellaneous kinds of objects which the Thames tide washes out and the stories behind some of them we can only guess at, including him. But first of all, let's just do a quick run through of some of the other pieces here. I'm going to start off with this military pocket watch here, which is really beautiful. And I have found um, three, if not four of these. I've managed to find three that I've got here in front of me which came from the River Thames and it is actually a Rolex and it's a military issued Rolex and it would have been issued probably during the World War II era in around about 1935. It's got the broad arrow on the back and also 
a serial number and they all have different serial numbers. Unfortunately, none of them have got their little hands or the glass on them, but they're beautiful little pieces of history nevertheless. And I'm sure that if I was brave enough to open one of them up, um, that the, the workings would probably be in really good condition but I'm not brave enough to do that so I'm just going to content myself with imagining whose pocket that used to be in all those years ago and how it ended up in the Thames. Um, I also have my pipe here which dates to let's say between 1840 and 1870. It's been in the mud for such a long time and it's in such good condition and again, like the pipe that I spoke about a few weeks ago that I found in the mud, this one has a great big chunk of tobacco in the bottom. And it's incredible, isn't it, that after 200 years that that tobacco is still in there, that the mud just preserves everything so perfectly. And again, I just can't help wondering who the last person was who held this pipe, um, because the last person who held it before me would have been the person, presumably, who smoked it. And then 200 years later, here we are. Well, look, almost 200 years later, you know what I mean. Um, we've also got this lovely stoneware ink pot here from Victorian times, also known as a penny pot or a pork pie because of how it resembles a pork pie. And again, it's fun to think of who may have used it to dip their their quill in there and write a letter or a novel, who knows. The little coin which I found, uh, which I have cleaned up, turns out to be a Queen Victoria farthing from 1860. And then this little coin-like object, a little round piece of lead with the number six scratched into it, is, I believe, some form of little token, like a gambling token. And I do have a little box of similar tokens, uh, which I believe were used for gambling by sailors back in the 19th century and who were probably actually not supposed to be gambling at all. So I don't know why there's so many of them scattered on the mud, but maybe they hurriedly threw them over the side of the ship when their official came along to tell them off. Again, it's um, the stories behind these objects which makes them so fascinating because we can only really imagine how they got to be in that mud. And then lastly, of the objects which I have here in front of me, I have a very motley crew of lead toys in various states of disarray and disrepair, many of them um, with no heads, and some of them looking, uh, yeah, very worse for wear. Now the little toy which I thought might be a lion or a rabbit definitely is a rabbit. You can see his little ears here. I managed to clean off what looked like a, a huge mane to reveal the rabbit underneath. So there is the rabbit. And here we have our little Native American here. Um, I also managed to get the crustiness off of him and here he is with his bow and arrow and as I was looking at my collection of lead toys I realised that I've actually got several Native Americans exactly the same so I've got a now um, a, a little lineup of three of these all um, shooting their arrows and I also have two Native Americans on horses so I'm afraid that the cowboy here, um, who has not got a head, in fact I've got two um, what I think could be cowboys with no heads, are slightly outnumbered, and so is the rabbit. So it's fun to think about, you know, the children that lost these all those years ago, um, children playing with these little lead toys, which as we now know is not the ideal material to make toys out of for children. So that's that for the objects which were on the video. And now I can get to this dog here. Now, when I first found him, I thought by looking at him, I immediately saw these nails poking out of his back. And I thought, oops, that's some kind of modern voodoo figure and something that I definitely don't want to pick up and take home. But, um, I must have had a sixth sense, I think, that I might 
have to keep him because before I left the foreshore I actually put him right at the top of the tide mark so that after I'd gone home and I, and I posted the pictures on Twitter like I said several people contacted me and said well what you've got there actually is a very interesting uh, object it is a Nikisi power figure from the Democratic Republic of Congo and he was probably made in the 19th century and uh, so when I was told this I thought gosh I'd better go and pick him up again so I quickly jumped in my car dashed down to the foreshore and just got to the, the top of the tide mark before the, the tide was going to carry him away down the river and so I took him home but I still didn't feel too comfortable about him to be honest it just wasn't something I don't know I just didn't feel too comfortable having him in the house having said that I'm not superstitious I guess there must be something there because I just didn't feel comfortable so I left him in the car for a couple of nights and then finally I brought him inside and now to be perfectly honest with you I've grown quite fond of him what is an Nkisi power figure well, Nkisi means a container that holds an ancestral spirit and empowering medicine and materials. And the plural of Nkisi is Minkisi, which happily is a lot easier to say. And Minkisi were made in the Democratic Republic of Congo um, and they were made in various forms, often um, in the human form but also in animal form and this one is a dog and this one has a different name he is an Nkisi Kozo and so these figures were actually a collaboration there were two people who made them there was a sculptor and there was also a spiritual specialist called an Nganga so the Nganga the spiritual specialist would ask the sculpture to create the figure and one of the things in common about all these Minkisi is that most of them have a little backpack, sometimes on their back, sometimes in their belly, um, which was where the empowering medicine was placed. And then often over the top, uh, like on this one, there was glass or mirror for various reasons. And it's quite nice because this one here still has the glass in the back. And the Nganga would use the figure to help his clients. He would use it to heal his clients or to record agreements and contracts. And he could also activate this um, figure to go after evildoers. And to activate the um, Nikisi Kozo, such as this one, um, because essentially it, it's just a piece of wood, but to actually activate it um, nails would be driven into it and each nail would be a call to the Nkisi to um, come and do the bidding of the Nganga. And so there's such a fascinating story to these. So goodness knows why this one was in the Thames. Now, as I was saying, this was probably made back in the 19th century. And in the late 19th century, um, when there were missionaries over in the Democratic Republic of Congo, often they used to confiscate these figures because they saw them as something um, demonic or witchcraft, etc. So they would confiscate them, often destroy them, but they were also um, sold to collectors. So many of these objects left the Democratic Republic of Congo and found themselves in museums or destroyed or in private collections and certainly I know that there is a big call to repatriate um, these pieces back to the DRC where they really belong. So um, I'd like to say thank you to Dan Hicks and also to Theo uh, Weiss who have given me some pointers as to where I can find out information about these and um, one of them said to me that these figures are often on a journey so maybe this dog was on a journey. Uh, initially when I saw him, you know, I thought that uh, he was kind of modern, but now it's very clear that he's definitely got some age to him. I'm glad I rescued him from the Thames, but 
um, yeah, I don't think that his journey is over. So what's your thoughts on it? What do you think about it? And also I'm going to put a link up in the corner to an excellent video, um, somebody who is talking about Minkisi power figures. And I think if you're interested in finding out more about them, um, there's really so much more to them than a sinister looking um, voodoo creature, something that they really aren't. And I've actually become quite fond of it and because it really has got a story and it just goes to show that just because something uh, looks quite ugly and sinister doesn't mean that it's not something that's quite precious and that has a story to tell. So that is the story of my new friend, the Nakisi Kozo dog from the Democratic Republic of Congo, made probably in the 19th century and whose journey is not over and who I'm looking forward to sending him on his way to the next part of his journey. Voila, I think we will end there. I shall place him back here. So yes, I welcome your thoughts. One of the great things about this YouTube channel is that um, I always get so much engagement from you who watch my videos and I really value your thoughts and opinions and I'd love to know what you think about the Nikisi Kozo, where he should go, what do you think about him? Let me know, maybe some of you actually know more about these figures than, than I do, which is actually probably highly probable because I don't really know that much about him. So thank you very much again for watching and thank you for your comments and feedback on my previous videos. Thank you to everybody who has donated to my Kofi account and who have bought me a cup of virtual Earl Grey tea with lemon. Uh, they have all been very, very much appreciated. So thank you to all of you. You know who you are. So I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead, everyone. And I'm sending you lots of love from London. Take care. Bye-bye.